Director of Penn's Engineering Entrepreneurship Program. I started that. I started the program back about 21 years ago, when the then then Dean Eduardo Glant of the Engineering School um, invited me to start an Engineering Entrepreneurship Program. At the time, Stanford had just started within the year or two of that time. And then during entrepreneurship program, it was really the first uh, substance in the country, probably in the world. And they ran a workshop and invited um, academics from around the country. And we had one professor from Penn Engineering and one professor from Wharton that teamed up and went out to the workshop to see what is engineering entrepreneurship all about. And they came back um, with uh, and produced a white paper for Dean Glant saying, this really resonates with engineers. You know, up to this point, entrepreneurship had kind of been in the business school domain, but they found that it really fits very well with the engineering schools, because when you look at it, most of the high-tech entrepreneurs are engineers. They're not business majors. Lots of favorite memories. A lot of it having to do with, I had some fantastic professors um, that were actually enjoyable to, to talk to just beyond the academics. I mean, they were great in the classroom, um, but also were very personable and would make time for you, you know, to talk about career matters, other matters. Um, friends that last to today, and, and I was at Penn decades ago, like 50. <laughs> And long-lasting friendships. You know. So between what I learned, the friendships that I made, uh, organizations that I was involved in, um, just a wealth of great memories from Penn Engineering. They all kind of built on each other. Um, I was a mechanical engineer, and um, and you know Penn's engineering education is quite theoretical. <laughs> Um, you really don't, you don't, um, at least back then, you didn't get a lot of hands-on experience that really related to what you would do in the field, but it built the foundation so you could quickly learn the, um, you know, the hand, what you needed to do hands-on. And so I built on that, got the job at Westinghouse I talked to you about. A Peace Corps was very receptive to picking me up because of my skills in mechanical engineering, which uh, related to water supply systems. So that's how I got that job. Um, coming back then, the job out of Bechtel was all, again, building on my mechanical engineering, getting into the advanced electric power technologies. Uh, that then led to the work with the U.S. Department of Energy, led to the relationships there where they offered me an opportunity to start my own consulting company. And again, building on this advanced electric power technology, we then uh, morphed the consulting company into a real independent electric power company with our own power plants. It was really getting people with complementary skills and that enjoyed working with each other. I mean, we the hours you put in an entrepreneurial business are unlike 
anything else that you will do. Uh, it is a, a job where you think you're in the office early at say 7.30, 8 o'clock and you find you're not the first one there. You find that you're leaving the office at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, and you find that you're not the last one to turn the lights out. Um, and it's just great people. Um, Harvard University actually wrote a case study about the company, and they were amazed at the um, camaraderie and the work ethic that we had in that company. We worked really hard. We played really hard, too, and, um, and it all just worked very well. If, if I had to identify one thing that distinguished us from the rest of the people of, um, in the industry, it was the people which then led to cutting edge power plant designs. Never underestimate the power of a personal network. Uh, you'll find throughout your career, and it's not just, it's not just your, your pen friends, which will be an important part of that network, the people you meet all the way along. Um, the world's a pretty small place, and you'll be surprised who you run into you know, decades later that may be uh, very helpful to you, and you may be a very good, great help to them. So I think that for young entrepreneurs in particular, we don't have a lot of experience. And if you don't have a really good mentor to help keep you objective and, and also keep you enthusiastic. You know, when things get down, a good mentor will be a cheerleader. And a good, and a good mentor will also help you take the rose-colored glasses off and look at things more objectively. But avoiding the cognitive bias and uh, really objectively looking at feedback you're getting, knowing when it's a time to pivot is, is critically important to ultimately get to the product market fit. It's, it's a spirit within the company where people recognize that if they're, if they're creative, um, that it's going to be rewarded. And even if they come up with great ideas and say the ideas don't pan out so well, well, you're not going to get criticized for it. We want people to take chances. We want people to express their opinions, look for different ways to do things. Some of them will work. Some of them don't work. But we keep encouraging, um, we encourage that. Initiative is, is hugely important. And um, we want people to feel this isn't a nine to five job. That this is, we want to be there. You know, we want to be in the office. We want to be in the field. We want to be doing the work. That's the entrepreneurial spirit. The important thing there, very good question. The important thing there is that it didn't, we didn't let it. So we maintain the entrepreneurial culture of the company, even as it grew. And that is really important. It's one of the things you know that we stress in the course, the Engineering Entrepreneurship Program, is that as your company scales, uh, scales up from being a, you know, a small, fairly loosely organized company to one that has procedures and processes, um, don't lose your entrepreneurial spirit. That's what got to where you are. That's what's going to drive you in the future to keep you ahead of whatever competition you might have. I think a broad average is, I think the statistics say that about 80% of the companies don't get past their, their seed round of financing. Um, you can improve those odds significantly. <laughs> I'll plug our courses by taking our engineering entrepreneurship courses. We've seen some good successes come out, but we've seen a couple of failures. But um, the, I think common issues are we, we really miss the mark in what we call product market fit. And that's something we stress a lot within the course. And when we dwell on it, we have a module, probably the largest one in the course, is how to achieve product market fit. And so that's critically important. Uh, picking the right market segment and differentiating your product to fit with that.
that segment. Then understanding sales. Uh, most engineers, you know, we don't think of ourselves as salespeople. We have this image of an impeccably dressed, great golfing salesperson. And that's not the case. Entre the entrepreneur himself is, or herself is probably the best uh, salesperson. They understand the product the most and they're the most passionate about it. Okay, um, I'm gonna give you a case, a case study that comes out of Penn Bioengineering. Um, it's, uh, Catherine Sizoff was a, a student of mine and, uh, and she had an idea while she was at Penn. And it dealt with the ability to develop a sensor that you could put in, say, a, a batch of fresh fruit, be it apples, be it avocados, be it peaches. Um, and you could determine from the emissions from the, from the fruit what level of brightness it was at. She had this idea, and it was really intriguing. She came, she talked about it in class. She talked to me about it in my office. Um, she teamed up with my colleague, uh, uh, Professor Babin, and we all kind of mentored her through this. And she used the, the um, bio maker space, as, um, you know, the, which is one of the things we wanted to talk about today, to help develop her prototype. And so she, that was the opportunity that she had through an idea. Um, unlike some of other entrepreneurs, you know, they go out and work in the industry for a while, see how things work, um, and then take advantage of the opportunity when it comes maybe in your 30s. She really had a legitimate opportunity as a student at Penn. So she built a company, she started a company uh, through the facilities at Penn, the, the biomaker space, Pennovation, and um, uh, I'll fast forward this. She now has a company, they quadrupled their sales last year. She's up in um, hundreds of thousands of dollars of sales, uh, has just landed her first round of seed financing, something like three, over $3 million of financing. And now she's out hiring people. She's, her product is getting validated um, by growers, by retailers, by frankly other university labs. And she's, um, she has really launched her entrepreneurial space, but she knows the value of mentors, you know, get people that have been through it to bring that experience to her. Well, that's where moving from the biomaker space, which is like you said, prototyping, getting over to the Pennovation Center where you can actually set up an office, you know, and, and surround yourself. Um, you know, we also have some good accelerators in town, you know, like Dream It, um, where you can um, go and, again, get more mentoring and get space to operate in. It's rare, if, if ever, that a, a student can walk up to a venture capitalist with a pitch, you really want to be introduced by somebody and the introductions, and that's where we get back to relationships. Um, it's very helpful to be for that introduction. Mm -hmm. Now, at Penn, we have a lot of resources for those introductions. The Pennovation Center you know, can help you in that regard. Um, accelerators like Dream, for instance, in the bio, particularly in the bio space, uh, the Y Combinator, that's what these firms do, is they work with entrepreneurs with ideas and ultimately get them to develop a pitch to take to potential seed investors or venture capitalists.